Hello, and welcome back to the podcast where you are invited for lighthearted conversations about things that matter as you seek to live your most meaningful, beautiful, and joyful life. I'm your host, Dr. Edie Wadsworth, and I hope you enjoy your stay here at the House of Joy. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. Okay, little known fact, we actually didn't do it this time, but almost every time we start an episode, we sing. Oh. Welcome to the House, House of, of Joy. Joy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so fun fact as well is we sometimes will do test recordings and I'm going to share this, but we didn't know one time. Do you remember this? This wasn't that long ago. We didn't know that they were live streaming into <laughs> Facebook. No, no, YouTube Live. They YouTube were, Live. All of our takes were in YouTube Live, and Tanner texted yes, mom were. and was like, hey, um... Y'all are live on YouTube. Y'all are live on YouTube, and some of these are really short, and you're, like, And they're kind of weird, and, weird. and you're singing. <laughs> we took them all down, and I'm sad for you that we took them down, because now you can't see them. But what you don't see in the outtakes is a lot of singing and a lot of... It's a lot of weirdness, <laughs> and I'm sorry. But we are excited to be here today. We are talking about habits again. We love habits episodes, but today's is really different. We're talking about four habits to embrace or re-embrace during times of uncertainty, times of loss, times of challenge. And part of what inspired this for us today is that, uh, well, it's a couple of things. First, last week... My dear little Emmy said goodbye to Haddon. He's deploying to the Middle East. And it's been a rough patch. It's been rough, to say the least. Yeah. It's exactly how bad you think it would be. Yeah. When she called me after she left him, she was heaving, sobbing. And then I started crying. It has been a roller coaster. And then, right after that, basically, over the weekend... Our area experienced like complete and utter devastation with flooding and all of the damage from Hurricane Helene. And um, it's so bad in some places and not far from here at all. Newport. Literally, Newport, Cock County is, I would say, 20 minutes from here, maybe. And their whole downtown was flooded. They have like catastrophic, catastrophic. I think never seen before. Yeah, I was seeing something like today this, where, like, um, like, they they have no way of getting food. Like people, they've had to have airlifters mm-hmm. like bring them water yeah, supplies, supplies. Um, and in Western North Carolina and South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, there's just so many areas, and um, we didn't have power through the weekend. So when I got power back. And then started watching. I'm like, oh, my word. This is bad. It's really bad. It's like, I don't know if they've (sighs) ever seen, like, weather devastation like that before. Yeah. So. And we just keep learning. Like, I was picking up sandwiches today. And um, we live on a lake, on Cherokee Lake. And our lake wasn't hit. But somebody was showing me footage Somebody who lives over there was showing me footage of Douglas Lake, which is not very far from here. We used to have a VRBO house there. You cannot believe it. There it is literally, the picture she showed me is just full of debris. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even tell it was the lake. I wasn't even sure what I was looking at. That's, and I said, is that all debris in the lake? And she's like, yep. That's how Lake Lur is in North Carolina. I think that's North Carolina. Yeah. But I saw a picture, or it was a video, and... It, like, the whole entire span of, like, across the lake is yeah. debris. And so it's just so sad. <sighs> people's homes, people's, you know, their whole town, really. Yeah. Like, it's so, destroyed. so sad. Um, and so I have been just, like, glued to watching footage of it, um, especially because there wasn't as much coming out, and we didn't have good service at all any service for a while and so it's like I've been late to see all the footage of it but it's really really bad so we um we just thought this would be a good time to kind of talk through it because this is what people are going through especially in our area right now and I just know that this is how life is for all of us unexpected things happen tragedies happen 
you know, uncertain times, challenging times. Um, it kind of has reminded me a little bit of when we lost our house to a house fire Mm -hmm. and, um, just the hopelessness you feel, you don't know what to do. And I have felt a little bit like that throughout this, like trying to figure out where to donate, who to give money to, how can we help? I mean, I didn't even know what to do at first. So I just started ordering a bunch of waters that I can take to a drop off station. I'm like, people need water. Um, but just trying to figure out how to help, what to do. But also if you're someone who is going through a really rough patch or, you know, we just thought this might be good, just a good refresher. I also am always, anytime I remember like rereading this during COVID and, um, at, at multiple different times where I'm going to get my glasses on where I, where this quote has really been such a blessing to me. Um, And I know a lot of you will have have heard it, but I do want to read it because I think I've read it to uh, Emmy and Katie yesterday, and they're like, oh, my gosh, that's so good. So I want to read this, and then we'll jump into discussion. The first action to take, the first action to be taken is to pull ourselves together. First of all, let me say, he wrote this um, back in a time, I think during the Second World War, where there was the threat of the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. And so he was writing this to address that. He he says, the first action to be taken is to pull ourselves together. If we are going to be destroyed by an atomic bomb, let that bomb, when it comes, find us doing sensible and human things. Praying, working, teaching, reading, listening to music, bathing the children, playing tennis, or we might play pickleball. Chatting to our friends over a pint and a game of darts, not huddled together like frightened sheep and thinking about bombs. And I love that quote so much because I think it can feel, I had actually had a great talk at our live event a couple of years ago with Tim Willard about this because he's a C.S. Lewis scholar and we had a really interesting talk about it. But I think it's always, when something happens, I mean, I think even in the political climate we live in, where people are so divided and so fearful, where, you know, we have natural disasters like has just happened, or we have things in our personal life that leave us in this state of like fretting or we don't know what to do. And what we often don't think of that would be good to do is just to actually live the actual life you've been given and serve the people in your life that you're called to serve And that feels like, (laughs) it it feels a little bit dumb to say, but then you read the quote and you go, oh, that's so comforting. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how you both kind of took it. Oh, yeah. It's so comforting. And I think in terms of, like, natural disaster and weather, um, there are some things where it's, like, your new normal of life that he's kind of alluding to is so different. So it can be hard to even see, like, what is there to even do i'm sure right like, because you don't have you the don't luxury have of the luxury of yes playing pickleball or yes. reading or whatever yeah it says there but i yeah. think the point isn't what you're doing no it's like a state of mind state of mind and yeah. also who you're serving because i've seen from a lot of pages like in times of disaster or in your worst times for the most part it's not always everyone's experience but you start to realize how many good people there are there are and yes. how much people want to help you yes. and it's not the government and it's not always <laughs> the really big people in the world it's no. usually the ones that are your neighbor or your neighbor across town or the town right over or whatever it is but yeah um it's funny because when uh, this happened we had in our area again not much damage at all but lots of trees down and the power down for quite a while And it was so funny because Tom um, cleaned out his four-wheeler. He took (laughs) three days' worth of school clothes that were muddy and wet out of his four-wheeler. I'm like, oh, so there's where where all those good clothes have been. shorts are. Yeah. And um, he said, I got to go over and help Pete and Becky. And our neighbors had had a bunch of trees down, really huge, big trees. And so he took his his four-wheeler. He hitched up his um, trailer 
to his four wheeler, drove it over there. And I thought to myself, I better go check just to make sure like he's not in their way. Like I don't want him. Right. If he's really helping, that's great. But I don't, you know, I didn't want him to be in their way. So I drove over there and it was so cute. He literally was helping so much. And Becky's so sweet. And she's like, Tom is so amazing. This is so helpful for us to have this, to haul this brush down here. And he just worked his little heart out all day. And it's like little things like that, that we can do you know, during times like this, as simple as it seems, whatever we can donate, however we can contribute and help. It was, um, I think I mentioned the last episode we filmed, um, with Haddon being on, like that is the center of my world. So it's a lot of what I'm thinking about right now. And it is really hard. Um, but we went to that family day, like I had mentioned, and it made my perspective just grow so much because the majority you know me and Han just got engaged we don't have kids we're not married um but the majority of the people there have like little babies and so many kids like you know kids that know what this is what's happening happening, and their dad is leaving for a year and someone's spouse who has two babies is leaving for a year and it reminds me of that because they like had a couple speeches like a mayor came and spoke and to all the family members and these two women came up and spoke and they were the head of the like family services so Mm -hmm. they help other wives and other family members they have a facebook group and all this stuff and we went to talk to them afterward and in my head when they were up there talking i'm like they must have been through this so many times to be able to support this many women Mm. and they both this is their first first deployment and one of them had two young boys and it just does grow your like they are coming up there saying we want to help you come ask us any questions like they are helping so much they are running this facebook they're running this whole program and they've never even done this before like they yeah. also need so much support and it was so eye opening to me because literally the thought i had when i was sitting there is i could never i don't think i could ever get to the point no matter how many deployments he went through that i could like stand up there and be so strong and they have never been through it before like they're basically in my same position although i do not have children which i'm very grateful that i don't have to go through that go through that right now yeah but it did give me such a perspective because it feels like my world is like and that spirit i think is so cool the spirit in us to help and you know so many amazing people in our area that are orchestrating ways to help people taking lunches to workers that are you know cleaning up um down in newport and just like so many people that give of their time and resources to help other people and to you know um help rebuild in a time like this it's so heartwarming but man i just never imagined saturday when we were Feeling some of the effects of it. I just never imagined that just down the road there would be that much That much devastation. Dan, yeah. yeah. So we wanted to kind of speak into that and talk about some things that you can do for yourself and for others that will kind of um, help when you're, you know, faced with In the middle kind of, of devastation, whatever Yeah, it is. and the first habit, although it's funny because most people don't make this a habit, but if you, if you follow House of Joy podcast... You probably do make this a habit, and we love you for it. But the first thing that I would say that's super helpful is to process the emotions that you feel. So whatever your challenge is, whatever you're going through, I remember I told you that so many times when I was talking to you in in that first day. I'm like, you just have to let it out. Because you kept saying, I just keep crying. I just can't stop crying. (laughs) And I'm like, yep, just, it's okay to be sad. The Lord, I think he knew what I needed and I started my period the week that he left and at first I was like great like I'm gonna be a a mess mess." yeah but I think it was such a blessing (laughs) because I just really had no choice but to let out all my emotions because it was happening either way I think I would have been feeling like that even if he wasn't leaving but it was super helpful because now I can talk about it like at that point last week like I couldn't even really think about it and yep. and not 
totally lose it. But because I let myself just lose it for a yes. couple of days, I let every emotion yep. come to the surface, even if I was tired of it. <laughs> Yep. And now I can talk about it and I can feel it and I can think about it without being completely like, I, I don't cry every time. And even if I did, it would be okay. But I think doing it in that moment yes. was so helpful. Yes. And people are always asking me, because I talk about this a lot, like, okay, so give me an example. What do you mean? How do you process emotion? And I mean, I have a whole module of this inside my training program. But I also have a free podcast where you can listen um, and we can link to it below on processing emotions. But if you think about emotions being energy in motion, then think about some kind of something that has to do with the body, moving the body, crying, um, dancing, um, any kind of like walking for me. I love processing emotions. Yes, I love going for a walk. Some sort of activity is so helpful. Yes. To process emotion. The other thing that I love doing is journaling. So, you know, whatever you're feeling, you can let that come to the surface, write that out, journal it. Um, something that's super helpful for me is out loud prayer by yourself yes because really that's kind of a form journaling is similar like you're writing it down but sometimes when you say things out loud even if you're not feeling like you're praying but just being by yourself so it helps to pray because then you're at least yes. talking to someone yes. you know um but saying things out loud and talking it out loud is yep. so helpful even if it's just in prayer to God yep. or by yourself, whatever. Yeah. That really helps. I remember, uh, after we lost our house, I remember that feeling that you described, like I literally can't stop crying. Like I'll be okay for an hour and then I'm a mess again. And then I'll be okay for a little while. And then I'm a mess again. And it's so easy to tell yourself during times like that. Like I just need to get it together. I remember thinking that too, like I have kids, I have to get it together. They have to, but it's see also me. really healthy for them to see you process, you know, that this, yeah, this is hurtful, devastating, discouraging, like whatever you're going through, however it feels to you, you know, and, um, not trying to pretend like you're okay or be okay sooner than, you know, you really are. Yeah. And so I think we like to believe that there's some sort of mystery in really hard things that people go through that like they're doing, they must be, they must know something. To know something. <laughs> yeah. I always thought that it. about yeah. even military families. Yeah. Like it just didn't make sense to me how people could do it, could do it. But the thing is like, you just do. Yep. If you're in that situation, you just do it. If your house burns down, you just you just get through get it. Get through it. Yeah. Because there's really not anything else to do. Yeah. There's not some big mystery in like, yeah, your house burns down, your house is destroyed by a huge storm, like you're gonna be devastated and you're gonna wanna cry, or maybe you're gonna wanna scream. Like you just have to do those things. Yeah. <laughs> that there's no mystery. Yeah. You know? So true. The other thing that I will say on the processing emotions part is to not heap on extra suffering because I can remember the sneaky thought that I had when our house burned down is like in the back of my mind, is this something I deserve? Mm. Like there can be sneaky thoughts that just pile on extra suffering that we don't need. And your brain might offer you things like that when it, with whatever you're going through. And I would just say to hold fast to the faith that you have, God loves you. He will somehow twist this for your good. This wasn't as devastating it is, as it is to us. It's not a surprise to him. Mm. And he loves us. He'll take care of us. We'll get through it, you know? Yeah. Sometimes that, like, fault, not even false, but, like, there is just a point where you kind of have to convince yourself. Yeah. Like, you just have to be the one that's, like, you're processing your emotions, yes. Yeah. You're feeling the pain of it. Yeah. But at some point, you might have to fake a little bit of the... Yeah, we're going to talk them. about that, like how to kind of get your mindset yeah. back to in a second. But I do think what I notice for a lot of people is that it's almost like another sneaky thought that people might say is, 
this kind of thing always happens to me, mm. right? Like, I, I said have that such too. bad luck. Have like, you said that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And like, don't heap on extra suffering. It is what it is. It's always something that we can grow from and learn from. We'll always, you can always believe that you'll be better on the other side of it, but don't heap on anything extra to make it worse for yourself. The second habit is, this one is really, I really love this one, which is to surround yourself with wisdom and encouragement. So I always find myself in times like this, I craved it this weekend, going back and reading C.S. Lewis, um, reading the scriptures, like seeking like that comfort in trusted mentors, you know, books that you love, theologians you love, um, podcasts you love, like hopefully House of Joy is that for you, you guys. Hopefully hope we, can, so. we can surround you with some encouragement too. But um, your brain during a time like that is going to keep offering you things mm-hmm. that aren't helpful. And I, d- I do think it's so powerful to reread a book that you know will bring you comfort. Um, meditate on the scriptures. Maybe memorize a little section of scripture. I remember right after our house fire, we went to church. We lost our house on a Tuesday. We went to church. I think it was on that Friday, but it was like Christmas Eve or Christmas. It was near Christmas. And the scripture reading was um, from Romans, and it was, there is therefore, or there is um, basically nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Mm-hmm. That scripture, not, not angels Neither or death powers, nor or life, or nor death, things nor life. present, nor yes. things to come. Yes. That's my favorite verses. It's my confirmation verse. confirmation verse. verse. Mm-hmm. And that was the reading. And I remember thinking, oh, yeah, how powerful. Nothing can separate you. From the love that God has for you. Yeah, so comforting. And the other thing that, like, I noticed for myself this weekend is I got, you know, like, most of us, like, think of what you did after, well, you were a baby, but think about what most of us did after 9-11. We were glued to the TV. We were glued to the news. And it's almost like you get in this habit of just, like, that negative news cycle. I was kind of like this when I finally got power and service back, like... You want to I want to see it all. I yes. want to find all the, okay, show me this and show me this. And I think that's great so that you know the scope of what's happened and you know maybe how you can help. But also reminding ourselves that God is in control. He loves us. You know, like those mentors that you know will give you that timeless, eternal yep. wisdom. And encouragement. It even reminded me to... Um, which I don't know what your other two points are, so I don't want to <laughs> go be. ahead. It's okay. It might but, lead us um, right into three. Yeah. When Hadden was leaving, it the next day we my friends had planned like to watch the football game with it was all my friends and this had been planned for a week or two, and my brain really wanted to feel guilty to go to that because like, how could you be having so much fun? Like this is not a time right, to be like so carefree with your friends. Yes. But I went and I realized like, it's just like what that quote says. Like you shouldn't just stop doing the things that make you, this is perfect. This is point number three, but it so made me feel so much it, better. Sister. Like going and realizing like my life is still normal. Yep. <laughs> I can still watch football on a Saturday night, yep. even though Haddon isn't here and it doesn't have to make me so sad. Like I can be okay today yep. and bring Mac and cheese to this function. And I don't have to be like, and there's miserable. something like even like in the, that's what I loved about that quote. Like there's something in the tasks that we do every day, reading, listening to music, making food, that serve our neighbors in whatever way. Like you said, just bringing mac and cheese. There's something in that that is so nourishing to our souls. It is. And I think it's easy to let go of all that when you're in a stressful moment or you're, you know. Yeah, or like with the political climate. Like, yeah. oh, it's so easy to look at those things and be like, how do I live my life with all this going, with all on. This going on? Like, yeah. I'm so scared this is going to happen. Well, yeah. the world is going to end if this happens. Well, no matter what, we still have the things that we're always surrounded by with in our normal everyday life. And I love this. This kind of comes, well, this, I'll mention that 
with number four. But I do think that <clears throat> those, there's just so much comfort in those everyday things that make us human. And we don't want to give up on those just because, you know, at, at, to, to the degree to which we can. It's funny because um, when we lost our house to house fire, we, I went shopping with Aunt Gina, I don't know, a few days later, a week later, to just buy some, like, bare necessities. And I was like, I've got to get a Dutch oven. And she looked at me like, you don't you have don't a stove. You don't have a sweater. You, you don't, don't have a sweater. jacket. You don't have a jacket. You don't have a stove. You don't have a house. I, I'm not sure you need a Dutch <laughs> oven yet. But isn't it crazy how what I was really craving is just I just want to make dinner for my family. Yeah, like the I thing, need to do something. I just need to normal. do something normal. Yes, mm-hmm. and that is so powerful. So don't forget that we have a you know it's a deep need that we have to the things that we take for granted that we do every single day. I guarantee you, there are lots of people right now who are like, I give anything to be making dinner. Yes, you know, and in actually, my house. this was something that um, I think Haddon's grandfather or someone had said, like. With and I'm just bringing up Haddon situation because that is currently the hard thing what, that I'm going mind? through. Yeah. But um, with him leaving, you know, it can be scary. There's a lot of uncertainty, especially with that much time and how far away he is and where he's at. Um, and it gives you all of this like real things to worry about. But the reality of it is, like, no one we could walk down the street tomorrow. Yeah. And something could happen. Right. There is just as much of a chance of your life completely changing in a week. Um, But we don't walk around in fear of that every day. Right. And so I'm not going to walk around in fear of that. Even though your brain can attach to more real things with him going. Yes. It's just as likely that something like we saw, like this yes. weather. It's like there's just as much catastrophic things that can happen. Just right here. Just right here yep. to people you love. Yep. And so there's no use in being so fearful yep. of situations you cannot control. Right. Yeah, and I think the last thing that I, that I was thinking of is that it's such an opportunity to serve each other. And I think no matter whatever is going on in the world – there will always be a neighbor to serve. And by neighbor, I just mean maybe the person in your family, maybe your actual neighbor down the street, maybe your neighbors that live 20 minutes away that you can donate some water to or send some money to or whatever. Like, we were created for that. And you watch people, I like just what I've watched in the last few days, what do you see all the time with military families? It's so cool how they're just like maybe even more so than other people just wired to serve. Yep. Um, but it's so much a part of how God made us. And it's, you know, it, it does something for the person we're serving, obviously, but it also really does something for us. So I was asking myself this weekend, like, oh, my gosh, it, it feels so helpless. What can I do? Well, part of what I can do is pray and I can make a donation or send some money or, you know, take some supplies. That's part of it. But also part of what I can do is just continue to serve right where I am. I can make dinner for my family. I can serve my clients. I can teach my class. I can, like, the things that I'm called to do in my everyday life, those are important and maybe more important than ever when we're in, you know, times that are challenging or uncertain or, or really tough. And so it was just a good reminder to me that C.S. Lewis quote that, yes, keep doing your thing. It's funny because we've been joking. I've been on, I've been down a knitting rabbit hole. (laughs) And um, there was something about it, though, this weekend. I'm like, didn't have power. So I was sitting on the porch. You had all of the time. Just knitting away. Yeah, didn't really have service or power or anything like that. Just knitting away. Um, And there was just something about it that's like, feels like it's because you know it's kind of a repetitive thing you can think about people say a prayer I was thinking about Haddon um praying for our military and then praying for all the people you know that have this loss but it's so interesting how something like that and we've even talked about we're like 
okay, we're going to go to Hobby Lobby and we're going to, you know, do this creative project or we're going to create some art or whatever. And that instinct in us to create is God given. Yep. And I think there's no better time to do that than times like this. You know? I agree. So I really agree. And it just brings out, it is such a comfort. It's yep. such a comfort. Like it's hilarious making that mac and cheese that day. Like, I was so happy to do it because it was something that I knew people would enjoy. And it's like the same with a scarf. Or you can really make that the same with anything yeah. that you're doing. Yes. Your attitude, whatever. But it it is so interesting how those simple things can really bring you so much uh, comfort. So much comfort. Yeah, so we will keep praying for our area and all the people around and so grateful that you know we live in a world where so many people are able and willing to help and um you know it's been it's been a really trying time a devastating time you know for a lot of reasons but there's always so much hope and I just think that remembrance that God loves us he's going to take care of us we're going to get through this he is for us um really has helped me has it been very sustaining i think during times like that i agree okay everyone well i'm so glad you joined us today and we are going to share a few things we love yes i I actually am ready for this are you ready for this i'm not ready for this but i'm ready so i'll just go go ahead first of all one of my favorite things is this bracelet stack from um j crew Oh, it's new. I've not seen this, and it's the perfect jingle. It is you know a good when jingle. Something jangle. like jingles in the perfect way, like see, the way that it, it's not jingle jangling. See, yes. but like these jingle jangles so perfectly. <laughs> Just some ASMR for you. And then another thing about them is like they're squishy, kind of like they are a little oh, bit Oh, I bet flexible. you love this with your sensory. Yes, like they, you oh, can just kind of nice. mess with them. Okay, love it. I've been loving them, and they go with everything. And like I said, just like the satisfying jingle jangle when you're like <laughs> doing things, <laughs> you know. You're jingle jangling. Yeah. Um, second, another thing that really helped me when you were talking about getting up, getting active, I started my Pilates membership The week that hadn't left. So he left on a Friday and I was like, I'm going to start this this week on the Monday. And I did. And it's super hard. But I am so glad I started it then because it really helped me just have that hour to like fully pour into myself and get sweaty and get sore. And every time I just feel so much better after. So, I've been mm, loving that. Love it. And, uh, oh, my Parker Thatch necklace. Oh. My mom got me this, and she knew that I've been wanting it, and it is worth, well, I guess I can't say that it's worth every penny, because I don't know. <laughs> it's worth every penny she spent. <laughs> <laughs> but let me guarantee you that... <laughs> It was worth it, girl, because I love it. It goes with everything. Love it. And it feels like such a treat because you bought, you got it for me after a work event, and you got it for Katie, too. It's just everything to me. Oh. And also, actually. Oh, I know. I'm obsessed with this. Ho- with this. Is it a hoodie? Or is it, it is a hoodie. That's oh, a hoodie. It's I like need it, you guys. From Target. It's literally. tomato red. That's my color. I'm Everyone, sure I can find the link. Red. I'm sure I can find the link. <laughs> um so i'll try to find it because they had also other colors but you know no i want tomato red mom actually actually got us all on tomato red and i don't know i'm pretty sure tomato red is everyone's color okay i would challenge anyone I do think everyone looks think good so. in this color i do too like really you do <laughs> she looks at katie and goes you do but um there's four things i can't believe i didn't i wasn't able to think about it one favorite thing last time because i actually like you have always so have many so many anyway. i am trying to think do i have anything new that i'm loving lately i'm looking around hmm 
I don't think Your new so. planner. Well, well you've I have, talked multiple I times. I have my new about planner, that. which I've talked about multiple times. Just finished a new book called Design Your Life in 90 Days. That's going to be one of my favorite one, things. I am so excited about it, you guys. I finished it last Thursday at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's going to the printer today. That's literally so exciting. Yep. I'm trying to think if there's anything upstairs that I saw <laughs> that was new. <laughs> anything fun? I will tell you one thing that I have loved so much. I got most of mine last year, but it is those battery-operated candles. Okay. You'll notice them. They're kind of tucked away in different places in the house, Emmy. Okay. Those were a lifesaver during the power outage. Oh, literally. They were a lifesaver, y'all. And you didn't even so know what you were preparing yourself for a not. storm. And they also are just so beautiful as it gets dark earlier. So mm-hmm. they just provide a little bit of light as you're wanting in the evening, you know, your house to feel cozy. Um, so I love them anyways, but it saved us from having to burn candles, you know, which sometimes the, we don't have that many candles, but we do have candles specifically for if the power goes out and it always makes Stevie nervous. Like, I don't know, but he's like loving the battery. He's about to order like four more packs. He's about to order like four more packs. Yes. Mm. Because they were so good. Now you do have to have batteries for them, but we, Usually keep plenty of AA batteries. That's but a great I will link hack. To the ones that I got on Amazon um, because they are fantastic. Oh my gosh! Well, yeah. that's so exciting. Yeah. So that was great. What's that? Okay. Well, I think that's what we have for you today. So yes. Enjoyed uh, spending time with you. Thank you for listening to House of Joy. Thank you for sharing House of Joy, and thank you for all of you who have followed us on the House of Joy Instagram account and send Emmy the most lovely messages. You are the most dear people in the whole entire world and we love you. I'll have you know that when I needed an excuse to cry again, I just went and read some of the messages (laughs) because they were were so sweet. sweet. Y'all are the best. Um, We're praying for all of the people who are affected by the storms. Yep. And just so thankful for 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 a great community of people that want to help. Yes. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.